Welcome to another episode of Let's Be Perfectly Queer. On tonight's show, we've got some amazing guests talking about an initiative that uh, launches from February 1st to February 14th every year. Uh, we've got uh, the founder and the originator, I guess, of, uh, of this initiative. Uh, Jessica Whitebread is here to share her story. And, uh, and my buddy, Brittany Cameron, who I am very happy to see. It's been far too long since I've seen that face. Welcome, ladies, to the show. I really appreciate you both being here today. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks. So the initiative that I alluded to is called Love Positive Women. And let's start with you, Jessica, since this is uh, sort of your baby. And uh, I think both Brittany and I can relate to having initiatives and programs that, uh, that we've launched and, uh, and feel very passionate about. Tell us about um, Love Positive Women and, uh, and what it's all about, why it began. Yeah, so Love Positive Women is a global initiative. Um, some call it a holiday, some call it a campaign. However it speaks to you, that's fine. Um, that started in 2013. It started as an idea um, to how to think about like how women living with HIV should be celebrated within our community, especially in a, a Canadian context. The focus generally isn't on women living with HIV. A lot of programs are housed within organizations um, that don't have a women specific programming around HIV. So it was it's like how how can we celebrate the women living with HIV within our communities? And how as women living with HIV can we celebrate ourselves? So while I'm talking a little bit of more uh, Canadian context, this project actually spans mm, in about 45 different countries have participated, about 100 different or actually I think last year, 125 different projects around the world. Um, which is really cool. And most of them are grassroots projects. So they're actually um, led by women living with HIV. For instance, in Nepal last year, there was an initiative where they knit scarves and gave 10 kilo bags of rice to elder women living with HIV, which is really sweet and amazing. Um, there was a talk show in India uh, where they remade someone's house um, and it, it just like they're so powerful. Um, so it's been really, really exciting to watch it grow. Really, I just planted a seed and I'm here to just nurture everyone's um, individual projects that really make up this collective movement of love positive women. That, that's wonderful. And and I'm trying to remember my research here. Uh, you, I think you began working on it in 2013 and then the first actual um, project launch was uh, 2014. So we're looking at seven yeah, years. Yeah. 2012 and then 2013. Yeah. So it's been, it's getting, yeah, it's getting close to the decade, like 10 years. It's, this is the eighth year from Canada. That's great. <laughs> That's great. And, and you did this in partnership with another organization or was this just like, how did this, how did this come oh, to be? What, okay. So, so basically, more? you know, I'm a, I'm an artist, activist, um, woman living with HIV myself. And I was just really, I'm really interested in my arts practice is how can, is about these long-term projects and social change work. So I actually started it. I was wondering how people start like international, like World AIDS Day or International Breastfeeding Week. And I was just like, I think you just like declare it's a holiday and you kind of fake it till you make it. So <laughs> So you just say, and then you do, and yeah. you tell everyone that it's the, the thing to do, and then they, they hopefully follow. And it was actually the women in Jamaica who started referring to it, probably in about 2015, as a holiday. So I was like, yeah, it's a holiday. <laughs> so <laughs> that's why I say it can just be whatever you want. So yeah. now for many women living with HIV, it's a holiday. Yeah, and what better reason to celebrate? Uh, I mean, uh, I, I I did a uh, um, a little post myself around love positive women this year, and, yeah. and it just just a few of the Canadian women that I've had the opportunity to to work with. Brittany wasn't part of the uh, the campaign that I've been doing, so I wasn't able to include her photo. But she's certainly one of those individuals who has not only um, helped mentor me in in the work and the activism that I do. Brittany was really there when when for me, that activism was born. 
um, and being able to speak with, with you, Brett, about the things that you were doing, not only around HIV in, in respect to women living with HIV, but, but all of us living with HIV um, certainly inspired me. And I, I want to hear a little bit about, about your story, Brittany, and why um, you felt it was important to really get involved and promote Love Positive Women this year, especially in your role as co-chair with the Canadian Positive Peoples Network. Yeah, thanks so much. Making me tear up mm -hmm. watching you grow into your activism. Um, so for me, it actually starts with my HIV diagnosis. Um, I was diagnosed at 36 weeks pregnant in March of 2006. And I was diagnosed at a time where women um, were not necessarily open in my community. Um, we were for the most part isolated and not connected, not well connected. Um, and so that's kind of where I started is trying to build connections, whether it was social media, um, you know, getting into Toronto to some of those women's groups and stuff but that's kind of where it started for me for my own feeling of of not feeling connected and knowing you know globally women represent more than 50 percent of those who live with HIV but here in the community we didn't have a face and so that really propelled me not just to get involved in HIV work but more specifically women's work because I really wanted um, to see myself represented in that work and see other mothers and and women along the spectrum uh, represented in that work. Um, and so, yeah, I think I learned about the campaign in maybe 2014, I'm thinking. Um, amazing campaign. I remember receiving my first card from uh, Jessica and the team in Visual Aids New York um, and just feeling like not alone, loved, validated, no longer isolated, deep sense of connection. Um, and so here in my local community, uh, I worked with my local ASO to really bring that here. Um, and each year we've planned, you know, small grassroots initiatives. We've, uh, one, one year we did a, a cannabis collective where we learned about uh, medical cannabis and the uses of that. Um, there was a goat farm trip. Um, I remember that one. It was so great. Yeah. I loved um, it. It was my favorite. <laughs> This year, um, this year is really special for me. So it's been about five years since my local organization has been doing Love Positive Women. Uh, we recently um, hired a new phenomenal woman, Sabrina Cooper. Shout out to her with our Why uh, Women in HIV AIDS Initiative program. And so I kind of gave that to her because it's been really me here at my local agency driving Love Positive Women every year. Um, and this year, uh, Sabrina is full of capacity and, and really excited to do the work. So I was able to kind of be like, here, this is something that you can continue leading in our community, um, which actually allowed me um, to put more time and energy um, to, as you noted, uh, I'm the co-chair of the Canadian Positive Peoples Network. And one thing I've never seen is visibility for women across our nation. And so it was really my honor to be able to see not only my baby grow in the Peterborough context, um, but actually be able to then allow that project to flourish naturally and grow naturally, but then be able to exhaust my energies kind of in a different way. So um, yeah, February very first uh, of this year, uh, CPPN uh, launched our first ever uh, Love Positive Women's campaign. It is a national campaign. It's it's just been beautiful. The responses that, we, that we've gotten, um, the women that have shared their stories. There's been at least two women um, in community uh, that are speaking in a in a public national forum and sharing their their testimonies for the very first time. And it's just so brave, right? And so so beautiful. And for me, that's what it's all about. It's about connection and empowerment and knowing we're not alone that that we actually do make up in the global context we're half here for that right so how 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 can we be acknowledged and um accurately represented and and build an awareness because we're still here yeah and i think that's incredibly important i think that's how we we battle the stigma that's associated with hiv as well by showing all the varieties of faces um genders races that that this illness affects and it affects everyone you know no one is immune from um from an hiv infection it really is a, a universal issue that we all need to to recognize and and certainly women uh, as I, as you've said and i agree completely have been sort of put to the wayside because for so long and for too long hiv and, and aids has been thought of as the gay man's illness the gay man's disease and we know that's not the case as you said you know more than 50 percent of folks living with hiv across this globe are, are women, and I don't know the percentage in front of me, but a large number of, uh, uh, of folks in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, for example, is, is women and children uh, mm -hmm. living with HIV. And those are always, in a lot of these campaigns and, and projects that we talk about around HIV, that seems to get missed. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, um, 
the stats here, right here in Canada, it's roughly 25% of those living with HIV are, are women, if I'm not mistaken. So when, when a quarter of the folks affected aren't brought to the table and, and given an opportunity to speak, Jessica, hats off to you. You create your own table and build the chairs and bring people to sit in them. And that's what, what I see this initiative and this project as, as having done. Um, and so speak a little bit about that and how, how this project helps to really shine light on what HIV really is across this globe. Yeah, so I think that uh, the women's movement um, has really, um, and through Love Positive Women, has been very strong. Um, as I said, it's mostly grassroots projects, and that's the way I really feel that women across this globe living with HIV organize and mobilize. Um, globally, uh, women's organizations, women-led organizations are deeply underfunded, um, for example, um, you know, with the last U.S. administration, they had the global gag order. So many organizations that do sexual and reproductive rights um, work were completely defunded, um, especially if they talked about um, reproductive rights uh, in relation to abortion, which many of our organizations do. So... Um, being underfunded to actually uh, be present. Um, you know, it's a, it's a male-led world. And so when you're saying bring your own seat to the table, I think that Love Positive Women also creates a platform to, for women to get together and to actually talk about, uh, hell yeah, there's a whole lot of us. And if you're not gonna do it, we're gonna do it for each other. So um, every year, it's been really, really incredible, um, the, the almost snowball effect of the project um, or the holiday campaign, whatever, and how women are um, kind of carving out this space. And I absolutely, I just want to mention, I absolutely love this year um, how in Ontario specifically, um, why has been uh, the Women in HIV um, initiative has been um, pairing it with Black History Month and really talking about in um, Ontario, uh, especially like North American, uh, global context, how, how actually HIV women and, and blackness, blackness need to be um, talked about in this intersectional approach. And that like, their work this year has been so powerful. So I really want to suggest people look on social media and just follow um, hashtag love positive women and you'll see it. It's, it's, it's stunning visually, but also um, sparks an incredible conversation, which is so important. Yeah, I, I've certainly been, been following and have seen some of those stories and, and, and watched some of the, uh, the videos that CPPN has, has put out. Um, and speaking of, women living with HIV that have uh, been a part of, of my life that have helped me in, in various initiatives and helped me to grow and learn and, and women that I that I love. Um, I, I speak of, of Deborah Norris, I speak of Kelly Leader, Carla Martinez, all these amazing women that are bravely telling their stories about living with HIV and they're all so very different stories and I think that's really important and I'm glad you touched on on the intersectionality between um, women of color as well and there was another post that I saw recently um, on the Love Positive Women page um, that was focused on, on trans women. And I think that's another piece of the puzzle that is often overlooked and, and missed. And so I think the fact that, that Love Positive Women isn't just Love Positive White Women, you know, it's all, Love All Positive Women and, and really get a, a focus on that variety of, of the demographic that HIV really does affect. And, and Brittany, maybe you can speak a little bit more with respect to that, because again, when we talk about um, women of color and tra trans women and and sex workers and, and women who inject drugs, all these, all these very specific folks that are at risk for um, being uh, infected or affected by HIV are again, often missed stories that we don't hear about. And it's, it's hearing about those real life experiences that really make a difference. Yeah, and I think for me as you know, a cisgendered white settler woman um, who does get often invited uh, to the table that 
part of my obligation of showing up for my sisters is, is ensuring accurate representation um, and appropriate representation. I'm constantly the person in the room that's like, what about our trans sisters? What about women who use drugs? What about sex working women? And um, you know, just trying to continue to keep those folks on the agenda, um, reminding people that they are a part of our community. I remember a few years ago, Jessica, one of the graphics, I make graphics every year for the campaign, and one graphic that Jessica and I both actually really love was an affirmation that our community includes women who use drugs, right? Um, and celebrating that, celebrating that in all of our diversities. The other thing I just want to reflect on with that, you know, we've talked a lot about women. You said, you spoke earlier, touched on children, Randy, and so I just want to like go back to that for a minute because I think it's also important to recognize that we're creating leaders. Um, when I was diagnosed, I was 20 years old. Um, there was very few women in Canada that were living openly with HIV. Um, and it was those women that I was able to look for and to for mentorship and leadership to um, empower and engage and enable myself to be where I'm at. So I think it's also important to recognize that by um, mobilizing women in the love positive um, move, women movement, we're actually able to enable others to act, especially young women who may not necessarily have found their voice or know where they fit in into this, into our diversity of who we are, right? So I just, I wanna give a shout out, I think to the young women and girls who are living with HIV and saying, you know, we see you and you might be in a position right now that you're not able to come and speak about your experiences for whatever, you know, all of those disclosure issues that, that challenge us, but we, we see you, we're here for you and we're leading the way um, in some way to ensure that you do have an opportunity to be at this table and be future leaders in your communities. Yeah, well said, well said. I mean, there, and, and you're right, when we think about um, anyone in the HIV sector who is, um, who is willing to, to share their personal experiences, there really is, again, a, uh, a miss in, in the stats of, of youth exposure. And, and again, that, that I think all goes back to, uh, to, I hate using the word stigma all the time, but it really just, you know, it's, it really is what keeps us uh, afraid to, uh, to share these stories. And, and as Jessica so wisely pointed out, these grassroots movement that are led by folks living with HIV, for folks living with HIV, and that that lived experience that we're able to share, that's, that's incredibly powerful. So I know Jessica is part of this initiative it's sort of broken down into different elements that, that folks can do, the, the card making, um, et cetera. Tell us about some of those um, aspects of, of the initiative and maybe some of your favorites that you've uh, been able to participate in over the years. This is where I'll, I can talk forever, but okay. <laughs> <I'll try> to... <laughs> it's really, so um, the card making, um, I think the first one, or one of them that started was actually in New York, a partnership with Visual Aids, um, uh, Dundee, Fire Island Artist Residency, a Positive Women um, USA, um, and a bunch of other organizations where they actually started to make in handmade paper valentines or, or cards. They call them valentines, but I'm like, they love Positive Women cards. Anyway, <laughs> and so they started off, I think the first year it was one workshop and then where they made about a hundred to send out to women around the world. Uh, today, maybe not last year, but uh, I mean this year, whatever. Um, but last year they it made over 1000 cards in two days of workshops. So they had six workshops with women living with HIV, heads of you know um, museums and galleries in New York City, accomplished like fancy artists um, and they come together in one room to make these handmade cards and are sent to like Zimbabwe, Ukraine, um, Argentina, Canada. It's really amazing. So lots of people took that and uh, all the projects actually um, kind of role model uh, initiatives or give a best practice. So there's lots of card making in Puerto Rico, in Jamaica, in Nigeria, there was one in Ukraine, in Toronto, uh, surrounding areas. That's been a very popular and um, project people uh, replicate. Another one that was really beautiful was in, um, in Malaysia. Um, 
People brought the children of women who were incarcerated to visit them as a surprise. That one made me cry. Um, uh, there was other initiatives uh, recently, the International Community of Women Living with HIV this year had a dance party and with a DJ Cosmic Cat, who's actually from Toronto, incredible. And there was um, people from 15 different countries just dancing in their homes and living rooms. That was a really fun moment. I know Brittany was dancing with me. <laughs> and it was great, it was still like, um, yeah, the list, oh, one of my favorite favorites, last one, was uh, the Institute of Many, which was started by gay men in um, Australia. Uh, for a couple of years, they uh, did an initiative for Love Positive Women that, where they asked uh, their pause sisters out on dates. So, and then they posted photos after, and I was actually asked on one because I just happened to be in New York the same time as Nicholas, who was the founder. And he was like, let's go on a date. And I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> so he took me for dinner and we smooched a bit and it was absolutely delightful. And it was so fun to just watch this, you know, gay men learning about the experiences of women living with HIV. So there's been hundreds and hundreds of projects, um, but uh, over the years, those are some that come to mind. Like I am obsessed with, you know, this, this video project that CPPN has been doing. It's been really exciting to like see these videos. And, and some are people that, some are the usual suspects that I'm like, oh yeah, I know this woman. But other ones I'm like, oh wow, this is so interesting. Like, like new voices and Brittany, you are like spot on talking about like this creation of new leadership um, and mentorship through, through the movement. Yeah, the, the videos have been amazing, and, and I love the idea of uh, of the Tim Initiative. Uh, I think that's something, Brittany, you and I should maybe uh, put that later and Stein and see if we can, you know, put our brains together and do something like that for next year. Yeah, I'm going. Yeah. I'm you heard, you heard some of your favorites, Brittany. What about uh, you from this year? What have been some of the uh, the favorites that you've seen with respect to the project, and more specifically, um, what you've been doing with CPPN? I think you know. CPPN is probably my favorite project this year because when I first got involved with CPPN, it was really because we had this national agency bias for us and we don't have a women's organization like that. And so I kind of seen that as an opportunity to potentially amplify women's voices. And so um, in some way I've, we've reached that, that goal. Um, we're not stopping here. This isn't the finish line, but um, it's taken a long time for us to be able to be in a position to launch a national campaign, um, to amplify women's voices, um, to make sure those stories are told. Um, and so, yeah, I think, you know, it's just been a really beautiful opportunity to see that, that hard work come to fruition, right? Like, it's been over 15 years at this point that I've been living with HIV, and I've never, ever seen a women's HIV campaign in our country. And this is kind of like a first one, if you will, in a different way. Um, so there's that. I'm also really inspired. The beauty of Love Positive Women is you don't need a budget necessarily. You don't need to have connection to an agency necessarily. Like you can dream and do. It's kind of like a what is possible question. Um, recently, when Jessica and I were kind of attending another the Love Positive Women's uh, video screening that we were doing, there was a woman who shared that um, she was so inspired by the work that was being done around Love Positive Woman and the campaign that she actually had fundraised with her own friends and family. She picked 10 women living with HIV in her community um, who um, often lead the work. Um, and she was like, I've done my own initiative. I want to send you a, a gift um, for Love Positive Woman. And so it's those pieces that really inspire me because it, it enables again people to be to act right and um, this person also spoke about um, not being able to necessarily access the supports um, they needed in their community but because we're kind of living in this virtual world now we can collect globally women living with HIV can connect you know in a different way and so I think that that's really inspiring for me um, yeah that was such a beautiful moment on that call we were all crying <laughs> Yeah, yeah that, that's fantastic, and and that's 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 what this this movement I think is all about. It's it's about sharing those individual stories 
And, and even if you just touch that one person that you inspire and, and give them courage and strength to, um, to realize that they're not alone and that it's okay to, to share their story as well. And then it just, it builds on that. And I think that's where, I mean, obviously it's working because Love Positive Women has been around for seven, eight years now. And I don't see any sign of it slowing down anytime soon. And for it to have become a global initiative now, I think that's, that's amazing. Um, so I, I salute both of you for, for the courage that you have inspired in others, because I think that's, that's so important. And I, I keep going back to the grassroots and, and lived experience. I, in, in my short tenure as uh, an activist, and I use that term loosely because I'm not really sure how I would find myself in the work that I do, but that, that's what really impacts me when, when even just one person reaches out and says, you know, I saw your story, I listened to your show, I saw your campaign, you made a difference. That, that is when the tears start for me. So I'm getting, uh, I'm getting cues from my producer that we are running out of time here. So I'm gonna just throw it back to each of you one last time to give me final thoughts and, and any, any closing remarks that you might want to, to give to the audience around Love Positive Women. I'll start with you, Britt. Yeah, I just want to thank you for this opportunity and thank you for your willingness to uplift uh, this, this platform. Um, and I think my other message is directly to women living with HIV, whether you live and celebrate um, in more of a closed way where you can't disclose or if you're out there and, and proud and vibrant in many ways, um, we love you. We see you. Um, you're not alone. Uh, and know that you're celebrated. You are loved. Awesome. Jessica, final thoughts? How do I top that, Brittany? That was so beautiful. <laughs> that wasn't fair to let Brittany go first, I realized. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, you know, especially, yeah, so building on what Brittany said, you know, especially at this time, it's very difficult. And I think, um, not more than ever, but um, just to engaging in Love Positive Women this year specifically, um, with women um, being very disconnected, um, with rates of violence um, increasing uh, exponentially around the world, I think it's really important to just take a moment um, for yourself, if possible, um, to just tune in and to know that like people care about you. And if you do have the capacity as a friend, ally, lover, sibling, whatever to show women living with HIV in your community that you care about them, maybe not individually, but by amplifying um, the movement, um, you know, that is really helpful and it's, it's going to be really impactful as we've already seen. So thank you so much for, for having the show. And Brittany, I think you're absolutely divine and, you know, um, yeah, anyway, you're, thank you. Thank you for all the work you do because I've been living for almost 20 years um, in a Canadian context and it's 100% true. Um, the visibility on a, on a national level, especially for women and women's like messaging, non-existent and kudos to you for finally bringing that. Thank you, Jessica. Um, it was really you who enabled me uh, to act. So I appreciate your leadership and mentorship. Thank you both again for joining me on this episode. I really appreciate it. We will do this again, if not next year, then maybe even sooner and just talk about women living with HIV in a more broader context. But thank all of you for watching tonight. I hope you'll tune in again next week for another edition of Let's Be Perfectly Queer. Thanks everybody. Thanks, Andy. Thank you.